We want to thank you so much for hanging out tonight. Beautiful night. I got to see the beautiful What a night it has been here at Huertos Fest, honoring lives lost, celebrating lives lived, and the amazing Osomat. Yeah, you, you can't stress that enough. The one word, the one reaction that I have is, wow. And this is what San Antonio is all about. And this is why I think it's awesome that Oso Motley wrapped up the night is because it's a fusion of music. And that's what San Antonio is. That when you come here, we make you feel like family. You are family and you're enjoying it. And this is just a wonderful, wonderful way to spend your time. A fusion of music, a fusion of cultures yes. coming together in San Antonio. Thank you so much for joining us. For all of us at KSAT 12 and Huertos Fest, we are so honored that you would join us for this very special event, honoring a holiday that has come to mean so much to so many. And you know, we hope that we inspired you to honor your own loved ones in your own special way. And we invite everybody from San Antonio and beyond to join us right here next year for Dia de los Muertos at Hemisphere. We'll leave you tonight with more from the amazing Oso Motley. Thank you, and good night. Now we gotta get it right, hold each other tight tonight. Come on! And the people of the world say, Oh, you baby, oh, you mommy, come and sign after party. Surprise. Your whip was on point, putting out shine your eyes. Now I really know why we had to rush the flow. Now we're gonna get it right, hold each other tight tonight. Even in San Apo, they say, For you, baby, or oh, you might be on the side of the party. And just ain't no party with no O.C.O. Step back, let me switch your clothes And I bet you didn't know the whole bag I flow Baby, baby, come on, do your dance Old boy, stand up and shout, that's what I'm talking about Everybody gonna tell a friend Who's gonna do it again?
at 12. The night beat starts right now. And we begin tonight with something that has not happened for more than a decade. Prisons across the state are now reopened after a lockdown that lasted for weeks. The search process throughout each unit has been extensive. We showed you some of what that looked like today on the news at six. Well, tonight KSAT investigates Lee Waldman shows us what's been found and the impact it's having on the inmate population. <laughs> Be thorough. We're going to make sure that the facilities are safe and that we um, we rid the facility as much contraband as we can. Contraband like cell phones, alcohol, drugs, and weapons. An update posted on the Texas Department of Criminal Justice Facebook shows just how widespread this issue is. From the start of the lockdown on September 6 to October 6, 398 cell phones have been found, 482 weapons, 385 dangerous items like handcuff keys, tattoo guns, pills and drug paraphernalia, and another 414 drug discoveries. All of our facilities go through some type of shakedown procedure each year, but to take a whole system down at once. Uh, had not been done since 2008. Bobby Lumpkin is the director of Correctional Institutions Division. He says this lockdown is a major disruption to day-to-day -day life in prison. It is a very concerning. We've also had some serious assaults, some assaults of staff uh, also, but uh, inmate homicides. As of October 4th, there have been 21 homicides at TDCJ prisons. 2022 saw seven murders. 2021 had nine for the year. wanted to come home and he wanted to venture in agriculture and he wanted to help people uh, get in shape. Lashara Lampkin's 22-year-old son, Braylon Holly, was found dead in his cell on September 30th. A TDCJ spokesperson says it appears he was assaulted. Lamkin says he was close to his release date. I know he, he wasn't perfect, but he did his time. He paid his dues. He shouldn't have, he shouldn't have to die. Lamkin says Holly told her about the lockdown. She thought that meant he would be safe from any violence happening inside. I mean, they were supposed to be on a lockdown. I mean, so I don't understand how this happened. As with all deaths, the Office of the Inspector General is investigating what happened to Holly. On top of the murders, there's been 17 fatal overdoses this year as of early October. That's the same amount as all of 2022 and five more than 2021. Think of a uh, prison like a small city, right? And it's reflective of what's happening outside in the free world. They're finding meth, fentanyl, cocaine, PCP, amphetamines, and large amounts of K2, or synthetic marijuana. Several staff members have been arrested for their involvement in bringing in drugs. We're committed to rooting them out, finding those individuals, and ensuring that they're arrested and hopefully prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Over the past five years, there's been an exponential increase in the amount of contraband found inside of prisons, from attempts to throw things over this fence to even drone drops of illicit drugs and cell phones. Considerable increase in, in some categories, two, three, four hundred percent increase. Mail is one of the main pipelines. The lockdown hasn't been easy. There's been challenges TDCJ has faced and they're implementing new protocols to try and stop contraband from coming in long term. We'll explore those tomorrow night at six. For KSAT Investigates, I'm Lee Waldman.
Police are still searching tonight for the suspect involved in a shooting at North Star Mall. We first brought you this as breaking news right here last night on the night beat. This happened around 8 o'clock last night inside the Macy store. A security guard was shot while trying to stop two suspected shoplifters. This is actually the third shooting at the mall so far this year. A spokeswoman for the parent company that owns North Star says all three incidents were isolated and the company is reviewing and evaluating mall security. Meanwhile, Macy's issued a statement saying in part, quote, we are saddened about the incident that took place at Macy's North Star Mall in San Antonio. The safety of our customers and our colleagues is our top priority. We're working closely with local police department on this investigation, end quote. Dog attacks have been on the increase in San Antonio, and in some cases they've been deadly. Animal Care Services responded to more than 30 attacks in their fiscal year, which ended in September. Every dog involved in one of those attacks was off of its owner's property when they attacked people. An ACS dog trainer told us they want dog owners to take more responsibility to keep this from happening. Even if we have our animal in a backyard, it is an it is imperative that we are watching them while they're in the backyard so that way there's no holes in the fence they escape from, they can't jump over the fence. And when we are seeing that reactive behavior, we can remove our dog from that potentially scary situation and give them comfort somewhere else. ACS says it's important for owners to learn about their dog's body language and behavior. For more tips, click on this story on KSAT.com. A South San Antonio ISD trustee is in hot water tonight, accused of disrupting a meeting and evading arrest. According to an arrest affidavit, Abel Martinez was taken into custody yesterday after police say he harassed the school board president while the meeting was trying to go into executive session. The meeting was cut short and Martinez was escorted out of the room and later arrested. Martinez is the school board trustee for District 5. Every year, the city of San Antonio gets a cut of CPS Energy's revenue. For the last two years, the city's gotten a lot more than they were expecting. Well, now city council members are divided on what to do with that surplus. You can read about how city council members feel about their latest plan involving that extra money. You can find that information right now on KSAT.com. A mother is outraged over a person dressed in blackface on Halloween. It happened at a local boxing gym, and the photos are getting a lot of attention online now. The photo is offensive, but we made the decision to show it in an effort to denounce it. The woman who says she took those photos spoke to the night team's John Paul Barajas. Dressed in blackface with shackles and carrying a bag of cotton. This is a costume Asia Matthew says she saw at Scribner Boxing Gym on Saturday. Case had has chosen to blur the person's face because we do not know if this person is a minor. You're inviting in people and disrespecting them and their culture and their family, you know, and that's not right. So I feel like they truly need to be educated. Matthew says her daughter took the photos and her son asked the person about his costume. She tells us he identified his costume as that of a slave and said he was related to the gym's owner. In shock. We sat in the car. The car ride home was like, silent. We went to Scribner Boxing to ask them about the photos that have since been shared on TikTok and spoke to an employee who was behind the counter. We're just trying to talk to you guys about this Halloween party where yes, sir, no you had Sorry. a person dressed uh, up as a slave. Advice, no recording, no trespass. I need for you to leave. You don't want to, you don't want to address this? Not yet. Uh, we got to sit down. I got lawyers in here. Okay. Was this your son? I have no comment. I need for you to please step out. Matthews explains it was a community Halloween event available to anyone. But the man we spoke to at the gym said it was, quote, a private party. You think this is okay at a private party? Uh, got no comments, sir. My son was like, I can't believe somebody would wear blackface around black, you know, black people and African Americans. And I was like, you know what, son? This is why I tell y'all all the time, you know, be aware of your surroundings. We're, 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 we're on our way up. Uh, there's no more talking. Just please go. We're on the way up, but this was dressed day, up sir. as a slave. Have a good day, sir. In front of children? Have a good day, sir. What was the thought process behind Have that? Day, you didn't think no, that was. Still private property. You didn't think this was racist or offensive? There's nothing you want to say. I guess no comment it is. John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. 
Let's take a look now at some of today's big headlines in your Nightbeat News Flash. Donald Trump Jr. took the witness stand in his father's civil fraud trial. Both of Trump's adult sons are accused of helping inflate the value of Trump's real estate business. The former president and 2024 Republican frontrunner is set to testify on Monday. Trump, his adult sons, and other company executives deny any wrongdoing in this investigation. The mayors of five major U.S. cities are pressing the White House for a meeting with President Biden about migrants arriving in their cities. Houston, Chicago, Denver, L.A., and New York City's Democratic leaders say they are getting little to no federal help with the flow of migrants. President Biden has faced criticism from both parties about how his administration has handled border security. After three weeks of war, the first Palestinians are finally being allowed to leave the Gaza Strip. A handful of Americans were among the hundreds of dual passport holders and seriously injured people who left while Israel's military gets closer to Gaza City several miles north. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken plans to visit that region later on this week. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Yes, it is only November 1st, but a group here in San Antonio spent the hot summer months getting ready for winter. We take you inside this warehouse where Christmas never ends. Well, Christmas is still several weeks away, but little elves have worked all summer long to put the holiday magic in a box. The night team's Patty Santos takes us to Reindeer Trail, where Christmas happens all year long. All those gingerbread shingles and chocolate Kris Kringles. There's a place in San Antonio where the Christmas songs never stop. This is our production area. Um, you know, just a bunch of elves, very busy walking away. Covered in glitter and garland, these elves have worked all summer long putting the holiday cheer in some of the most luxurious homes and hotels in the nation. We've had some products and some Hallmark movies uh, in the past, so that's been really, really exciting. Caroline Puehler, vice president of Seasonscapes, can't say their names, but says her trees have graced the homes of some famous clients. Ornaments. Puehler lives and breathes Christmas 365 days a year. And it all starts right here in a San Antonio warehouse. So we have different stations um, that work. So, you know, we'll have one person that's making all of the bows and the, and, and the loops, ribbon loops for the trees. Then we've got Liz here doing all of the branch displays. The warehouse could be mistaken for the North Pole with lots and lots of ornaments. So far this year, more than 600 Christmas trees and thousands of garlands have been trimmed and shipped. And for customers, it's as easy as opening up a box and fluffing and shaping the already decorated tree. Ready? In 10 minutes. I think the biggest tree that we've built this year is 24 feet, and we've done two of those already. You're in awe, and I know what you're thinking. I want to try that on my tree. Do you ever do classes? Because I feel like I could take a class and a lot of people would love to be able to know how to do something like that. You know that. what? I don't. Um, we have started doing a little bit of that on Instagram. Um, just a few like tips as we coming up to the holiday season. Her trees will bring Christmas magic to many local bank lobbies and hotels on the Riverwalk. Peeler says if you spot one, no, there's a little elf magic in each one. There's a team of people that lovingly put that together, um, and it's not easy. Patty Santos, KSET, 12 News. Multiple organizations are coming together to help raise money for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. It's the Fill the Boot campaign. The San Antonio Professional Firefighters Association, Local 624, and the San Antonio Fire Department are looking to raise money for the MDA through their Fill the Boot campaign. Today through Friday, firefighters will be out on the streets of San Antonio asking drivers and people out walking to donate by filling a boot with some cash. All right, let's take a look outside with live cam. Big question, how big will the chill be <laughs> when we wake up tomorrow? Uh, it's going to be similar to today, just a degree or two warmer in most outlying areas. So close to a freeze in the hill country, but I don't think we'll get there other than maybe a few of the nooks and crannies. Let's get right to the forecast for tomorrow morning. Out the door, 7 a.m., Fredericksburg 33, Kerrville 35, whereas we're at freezing 
earlier this morning in those locations. I think downtown San Antonio at 40, but outside of downtown in the neighborhoods will be in the 30s. 37 near Lackland, 37 Stone Oak, along with Elmendorf and Converse about 39 at 7 a.m. So feeling the chill again tomorrow morning, but then a warming trend begins. Notice we're up to 50 Friday morning, 58 Saturday, then into the 60s for morning low temperatures by Sunday. And that puts us back above average. Actually, by Saturday morning, we're above average. And with that, it, well, really, it, part of it's a direct result of increased moisture and rising dew points into this weekend, uh, particularly Sunday. Surface high slides east with the counterclockwise or clockwise flow around that. We get that wind off the Gulf of Mexico and that really boosts the mugginess. So you're not going to feel the humidity at all until we get to Sunday morning. Notice Saturday dew points in the 50s. We get into Sunday morning and those deweys rise into the lower 60s and that's the threshold where you notice the mugginess and the stickiness back in the air. Let's talk about the averages throughout the month of November. Average low today, 55, the average high is 77. By the end of the month, we see the average low at 45 and the average high at 68. Those are just averages. Today, we were 13 to 15 degrees below average for the low and the high temperature. And tomorrow, we'll start the day at 39, well below average. By noon, we're at 58. 67 for the high temperature tomorrow at Castroville 68, Canyon Lake 66, Bulverde 64. Widespread 60s with a lot of sunshine, so jacket weather in the morning, but by the afternoon, it'll be okay to be in the short sleeves, especially with that sun shining down on you. And notice the warming trend for afternoon highs. We're back into the mid 70s by Friday and then mid 80s early next week. However, I do want to point out we do have some 80s coming, you know, below or above average for this time of year. But right now, indications are another cold front could hit us on Thursday of next week, and that would sweep away the humidity and reset our temperatures just a little bit. Here's the big picture in terms of the overall weather pattern. It's pretty quiet across the lower 48 here. The main action is this atmospheric river coming on shore in the Pacific Northwest. I wish we could tap into some of that moisture. Unfortunately, we're just not going to. And the rainfall over the next seven days is going to be across the northern tier of the US. And for us, high and dry, a lot of sunshine. There'll be some clouds at times, ornamental clouds periodically. And that's about it for us. I do want to remind you, we fall back in an hour Saturday night into Sunday morning. It's got to set those uh, clocks before you go to bed on Saturday. Mornings getting warmer into the 60s, afternoons into the 80s by this upcoming weekend. And I have to leave you with one of my favorite photos from Halloween. <laughs> Harry and Lloyd from Dumb and Dumber, Mutt's Cuts <laughs> and the tuxedos to go with it. Harry, I took care of you. <laughs> You're telling me there's a chance. So cute. All right, thank you, Adam. Let's turn to sports now. We have Nick Mantis joining us this evening and a big Texas victory. A huge Texas <laughs> victory. This is perfectly said. A pitcher's duel was the start of the game, but when it came to the final innings, some explosions happened when it comes to the Rangers offense. We're going to check in on the score. Plus, we remember head coach Bobby Knight and all that he's meant to the game of basketball. So stay with us. The Texas Rangers are World Series champions. That just feels cool to say. For the first time in franchise history, the Rangers are the best team in Major League Baseball. They're going to be coming back home to the Lone Star State with the Commissioner's Trophy pretty soon. Now, due to TV rights, we can't show you the game five highlights until the game is over. Now, let's check up on the score. And the Rangers were able to win it five to nothing, claiming the MLB crown for the first time in franchise history. As we mentioned, some huge games, huge game from uh, from Marcus Sibian, who was able to get a huge home run in the ninth, an explosion of runs later on in the innings after a pitcher's duel went all the way into the seventh. Well, of course, we'll have more from the Rangers on this huge championship later on uh, as we follow this game. Oh, timeout to advance it. Oh, 
Johnson 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 takes it from him. Johnson hangs. Yes. And the Spurs have the lead. Keldon Johnson's steal and game-winning basket were a thing of beauty last night, helping the Spurs beat the Phoenix Suns and get their first road win of the season. Johnson finished with the team high 27 points. Victor Wembanyama was right behind him with 18, and in the win, Wemby got got a special message from Pop on what to do when you win. Pop always tells us humble and victory, but uh, celebrate it and enjoy it. So, to me, every win is every win is uh, it's, it's crazy for me, you know. I mean, it's of course, obviously it's the NBA, and I'm new here, but every win, as small as it is, it's it's I feel great, and I want to celebrate it. So yeah, every time, especially especially this win, this big time win, and before that was our first ever win. So yeah, every win is big so far. And the Spurs will have a rematch with the Suns tomorrow night. Tip-off is at 9 p.m. As we mentioned earlier tonight, Hall of Fame basketball coach Bobby Knight passed away at the age of 83. Coach Knight was well known for his temper, as well as his three national championships at the University of Indiana. Texas Tech fans will probably remember him for his years in Lubbock at the end of his career. But what most will probably learn is how much he did for his community, reaching out and helping others around him. We say a very special rest in peace to Coach Knight. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys are going to have a re going to try to have a repeat of what they did against the Los Angeles Rams this last weekend. But it's going to be a lot harder to do all of this against the seven and one Philadelphia Eagles in Philly this upcoming Sunday. The defense is going to need to shut down Jalen Hurts and the high-powered Eagles offense if it wants to get a huge NFC East win. And Micah Parsons shared what he focuses on when he has to play in a tough environment like Philadelphia. To be honest with you, like you don't even worry about who's out there. You so locked in on what's in front of you and what's going on that you really don't even notice the fans. You don't really take notice of the fans. You probably take them during the national anthem and you look around, you, the whole fireworks spill like that. But if you really locked in on the game, you're not worried about nothing that's going on. Like, um, and that's just how it should be. Welcome back everyone. The UTSA football team is getting ready for a big showdown against the University of North Texas this weekend. And this Roadrunners offense is something special. The Roadrunners have scored at least 35 points in their last four games and are looking to stay undefeated in conference play when they head to Denton to put this offense to the test against the Mean Green. And head coach Jeff Trailer shared his thoughts on what's made this offense so successful. We've kind of found us an O-line that we stayed together with now for a little while. We've, we've been blessed that we haven't got really injured too much up there since Makai went down. And uh, kind of settled in our receiving core and where that's all going to look like, where we're going to leave them and put them, how we're going to use the running backs. There's just a lot of stuff. Uh, I've told you on offense, you can be out there on air and not score. Not to mention, you've got to block 11 people that are angry over there. Yeah, those guys get pretty angry when it comes to that type of defense. It's going to be an exciting weekend. I'm yeah, excited to see this one. For sure. Thanks, Nick. You're welcome. We'll be right back. A deadly house fire. Five lives lost. I love all of them so much. That day didn't feel real. Two sisters struggling with an unimaginable tragedy. I remember the day every single one of them was born. For their mother, family was everything. She did everything for us. So I guess if we go back to Sylvia, how would you describe her? Yeah, she's just a really cool person. And, um, Hear their loving memories and how they are helping them move forward by streaming the full story now. Home was there. KSAT and our community partners want to remind you to roll up your sleeves and get your flu shot. There is one more chance for you to get a free vaccine courtesy of Bear County and University Health. It's this Saturday, November 4th from 8 a.m. until noon. If you want to register, just head to KSATcommunity.com.
Now that Halloween has come and gone, chances are you've got piles of candy that you are not going to eat or eat all of. So what can you do with it? Right now on our website, we've got five alternatives to just throwing it out. Look for this article on KSAT.com. Now that October is behind us, let's look back at it temperature wise. And we were above average 2.1 degrees above average. The warmest temperature 97. The coolest was 42. That's quite a spread. Obviously, we've started November on the cool side, but a warming trend is on the way. All right. Thanks, Adam. And thank you for watching. Have a great night.